girlies, happy 4th of July, and welcome or welcome back to the pod. Today, we're chatting all about one of my favorite things, and that is books. More specifically, we're talking about the absolute perfect, must-have, summer beach reads, okay? These are the romance books that you want to read when you're sitting at the pool, when you're sitting at the beach, and they're just fun, light things that are easy to get through and super cute. So get excited. But before we get into that, make sure you are following me at the Girly Girl Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. And also make sure you leave a rating and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts if you are liking these episodes. Okay, first up, um, probably my absolute favorite book that or romance book that I have read in a while, um, and that is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. Oh my god, y'all. I think I talked about this briefly um, on an episode maybe a few weeks ago because it was just so good. Genuinely, I read this in one day, um, but it's about this girl who every summer goes to stay at like a lake house and next door are two brothers who she's grown up with. And the story shifts from, like, past, so, like, her growing up to the present, where she's, like, all grown up now, and she hasn't spoken to either of the brothers in, like, over ten years, but we don't know why. And it just keeps going back and forth until we figure out why, and it's really good. It's really good. Let me read you the description. Six summers to fall in love, one moment to fall apart. A weekend to get it right. They say you can never go home again. And for Persephone Fraser, ever since she made the biggest mistake of her life a decade ago, that has felt too true. Instead of glittering summers on the lakeshore of her childhood, she spends them in a stylish apartment in the city, going out with friends and keeping everyone a safe distance from her heart. Until she receives the call that sends her racing back to Barry's Bay and into the orbit of Sam Florick the man she never thought she'd have to live without. For six summers, through hazy afternoons on the water and warm summer nights working in his family's restaurant and curling up together with books, medical textbooks for him, and work-in-progress horror stories for her, Percy and Sam had been inseparable. Eventually, that friendship turned into something breathtakingly more before it fell spectacularly apart. When Percy returns to the lake for Sam's mother's funeral, their connection is as undeniable as it had always been. But until Percy can confront the decisions she made and the years she spent punishing herself for them, they'll never know whether their love might be bigger than the biggest mistake of their past. Told over the course of six years and one weekend, every summer after is a big, sweeping, nostalgic look at love and the people and choices that mark us forever. So, kind of giving the Summer I Turn Pretty vibes, but it's better. Okay, it's better. Um, Because if you listened to last, or I guess an episode a few weeks ago, um, you would know that the Summer I Turn Pretty made me viciously angry. This one is cute. It's perfect. It is so, like, wholesome, but not, if you know what I mean. Like, open door romance okay but the actual plot of them like growing up together is so adorable it's so adorable like you can't beat that and they were friends before which is just really cute and I was kind of obsessed um so if you read any book that I recommend or you're only gonna read one read this one I'm telling you that now and this is the first book I'm saying and I have like 10 but read this book it is so so freaking good Okay, my next book is Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman, and this book is dealing with celebrities. It's like a normal person celebrity thing, and they also have like, I guess it goes past to present, Um, so like the flashbacks um, going back and forth, which is interesting. Um, I will say, I really like this book, but... There was one thing that just ruined it for me, or not ruined it, but I was going to give it five stars, and then I just didn't, because 
there was just one tiny bit that I couldn't wrap my head around. And that was just how long they had known each other for. That was just kind of, like, throwing me for a loop. Because they only really know each other for, like, a week. And then they're, like, obsessed with each other, which is, I guess, is possible. But it just seems like, obviously, the story is unrealistic. But it just makes it seem, like, more unrealistic. And then it kind of gave me the ick a bit. There was just one part that I was like, oh, my God. Make it stop. But other than that, 10 out of 10. A restless young journalist with big dreams interviews a Hollywood heartthrob. And 10 years later, it's clear that their time together meant more than meets the eye in this sexy, engrossing adult debut novel. Then, 20-something writer Chani, oh my god, I'm not, Horowitz, is stuck. While her former MFA classmates are nabbing book deals, she's in the trenches writing puff pieces. Then she's hired to write a profile of movie star Gabe Parker. The Gabe Parker. Her forever celebrity crush, the object of her fantasies, the background photo of her phone, who's also just been cast as the new James Bond. It's terrifying and thrilling all at once. Yet, if she can keep her cool and nail the piece, it could be a huge win. Gabe will get good press and her career will skyrocket. But what comes next proves to be life-changing in ways Chani never saw coming. As the interview turns into a whirlwind weekend that has the tabloids buzzing. Now, 10 years later, after a brutal divorce and a heavy dose of therapy, Chani is back in Los Angeles, laser-focused on one thing, her work. But she still spent the better part of the last decade getting asked about her deeply personal Gabe Parker profile at every turn. No matter what new essay collection or viral editorial she's promoting, it always comes back to Gabe. So when his PR team requests that they reunite for a second er interview, she wants to say no. She wants to pretend that she's forgotten about the time they spent together years ago. But the truth is that those 72 hours are still crystal clear, etched in her memory. And so she says yes. Chani knows that facing Gabe again also means facing feelings she's tried hard to push away. Alternating between their first meeting and their reunion a decade later, this deliciously irresistible novel will, will have you hanging on until the last word. So, like it said in the description, they see each other for like 72 hours, and then they don't see each other for like 10 years. And I'm like, I understand your like love at first sight connection, I guess. But then again, I'm like, what is going on? But the actual story is cute. And the actual couple is really cute. It's just the timeline is really strange. Um, That was the only thing that I was like, if I pretend like they've known each other longer, then I like it better. So I kind of just try to forget that they only like hung out for like a week over 10 years, which is a bit strange to them be like, oh my God, I'm in love. I love this man. And he's like, oh my god, I love her. And you're like, do you? Do you? But it was really cute. And if you buy the actual book, the cover is super adorable. It's really pink. It kind of looks like a comic book page, but it's very aesthetic. Um, I read it on Kindle, as as always. Um, So I didn't get the actual book, but I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos with people like reviewing different books and everyone is like obsessed with the cover just because it's pink and cute. So the cover makes it better. Um, The being thoroughly attached after knowing each other for a week is a bit strange, but the actual story, super cute. Um, It is an open door romance. So keep that in mind. The next book, um, The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. I know earlier I said, um, boo, the summer I turned pretty, but then again, it's good. Okay. It's good. Um, personally, I thought the main character is just kind of stupid, but, but I do like the actual story. It's like the other book I mentioned, um, every summer after I liked every summer after better. But The Summer I Turned Pretty is cute, okay? It's cute. It's wholesome. And they have a show. Now, so if you don't want to read the book, 
at least watch the show and then maybe you can share my frustration. I think the reason I was so frustrated was just because I got so into it that I was like thoroughly invested, you know, um, and I was just kind of putting myself in place of the character and was being like, you dummy, like what, what are you doing? Um, but it's the perfect like New England summer aesthetic vibes, which is just iconic. It's like Cape Cod, Nantucket, and it's perfect. Okay. It is literally perfect and it's so good and it's so cute. Adorable, like coming of age story. Um, two brothers love, um, love triangle, which isn't always my favorite. And in this book, made me angry because actually no it's more like a love square because she has like three different love interests um which like good for her that seems like a lot to juggle um but it does make the book really interesting and um personally i feel like she went with a guy who deserves literally nothing but you know that's my opinion belly measures her summer her belly measures her life in summers Everything good, everything magical happens between the months of June and August. Winters are simply a time to count the weeks until the next summer. A place away from the beach house. Away from Susanna and most importantly, away from Jeremiah and Conrad. They are the boys that Belly has known since her very first summer. They have been her brother figures, her crushes, and everything in between. But one summer, one terrible and wonderful summer, the more everything changes, the more it all ends up just the way it should have been all along. Y'all. The tension. The tension. It is just, it's perfect. If you're like, I don't know, anybody in high school, I feel like it's just relatable, okay? Even if you're not, like, in a love square, as most of us aren't, um, it's relatable. Okay, and I don't know. It's just, it's cute. You have, like, one brother who's, like, depressed and, like, kind of mean, but some people like that. And then you have the other one who's, like, her best friend and adorable and cute and perfect in every possible way. And then there's this other guy that she has, like, as her boyfriend. So three different love for interests, all New England summer and it's so cute because it's like the two combined families and it's really good vibes perfect for summer and it's really short too but if you don't feel like actually reading it I recommend the show um are there some cringy bits yeah but like it's good okay it's good next book that I really liked was the flat share by Beth O'Leary and this is a book that I thought would just be really stupid and that I just wouldn't like, um, but I wanted to read it anyway, okay, because I liked the cover, and I am someone who will easily buy a book based on the cover. I know you're not supposed to do that, but, like, it was cute, okay, and it seemed like an interesting concept and, like, something that I hadn't really seen before, um, because it's, I'll just, I'll just read it. Tiffy and Leon share a flat. Tiffy and Leon share a bed. Tiffy and Leon have never met. Tiffy Moore needs a cheap flat and fast. Leon, oh my god, Twami, don't, don't roast me, okay, I'm I'm sorry. (laughs) Worst nights and needs cash. Their friends think they're crazy, but it's the perfect solution. Leon occupies the one-bed flat while Tiffy's at work in the day, and she has the run of the place the rest of the time. But with obsessive ex-boyfriends, demanding clients at work, wrongly imprisoned brothers, and of course, the fact that they still haven't met yet, they're about to discover that if you want the perfect home, you need to throw the rule book out of the window. So I like this book because it has the romance, but also that's like not the only thing going on. Um, And I like its dual perspective. So it shows you the perspective perspective from Tiffy and from Leon which is always cute and I like because then you can see like what the other person is thinking and it's really adorable because they start liking each other even before they met because they leave each other like cute little notes and they're like not texting each other but they're literally writing on sticky notes and it's just so adorable and um everything just works out in a really cute sweet way but I think this book is just 
such an easy, fun read that's different than I feel like a lot of romance books. Because, I mean, they've never met. And then they do, but it's like in the middle of the book. But you still feel like they've known each other forever. And then also it has a lot of different subplots that are entertaining. And the characters are just like so different and like really quirky in their own ways. And I really liked both of them and all the like, I guess, sub characters as well. Um, But it was just so, so freaking cute. So freaking cute. Um... And I believe it was fairly short, too. I think most of these are pretty short because they're, like, romance books, you know. Um, But it was cute. Okay. So, if you're looking for a cute, fun read, check out The Flat Share because it's just adorable. And I think they're British. So, you can do a British accent in your head. Um, That's fun, too. So... This week's episode is sponsored by Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens has a product that I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I hated taking a bunch of pills and vitamins that felt like they were doing nothing for me. But AG1 tastes great, even though it's super healthy, and it has a tropical flavor that I look forward to every morning. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Literally everything. AG1 is lifestyle-friendly. Whether you eat paleo, keto, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 is perfect for you. This product also supports better sleep quality and recovery and supports mental clarity and alertness. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash emerging. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash emerging to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance insurance. And as always, this will be linked in the description of the episode. My next book is one that I talked about, I think, in an earlier book episode I did probably in January when I was doing like my most look forward to reads of the year. Um, And that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. As many of you know, I'm obsessed with Emily Henry. Anything she writes, I will read. Um, Beach read. Obsessed. People we meet on vacation. Obsessed. If you haven't read either of those, literally what are you doing? Um, Read them. They're so good. They are perfect. Literally perfect. And now we have book lovers. And Miss Emily hits every single time. And she killed it. Okay? She freaking killed it. So just read it. Literally read anything she writes. I swear. I'm genuinely obsessed with her. Um, if you follow like Emma Top on Instagram, you know that she is also obsessed with her and has put like a bunch of people on reading people we meet on vacation just because it's so good and it's so cute. But today we're talking about book lovers, her newest book. And first of all, the cover. I can't get over how cute and perfect her covers are. This one it's just chef's kiss. It's so beautiful and it just makes you want to read it. So read it, okay? One summer, two rivals, a plot twist they didn't see coming. Nora Stevens' life is books. She reads them all and she is not the type of and she is not that type of heroine. Not the plucky one, not the laid back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent, 
and her beloved little sister, Libby, which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for the month of August when Libby begs her sister, begs for a sister's trip away with visions of a small town transformation for Nora, who she's convinced needs to become the heroine in her own story. But instead of picnics in meadows or run-ins with a handsome country doctor or a bulging forearmed bartender, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a meet-cute, if not for the fact they've met many times, and it's never been cute. If Nora knows she's not the ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences that no editor worth their salt would allow, what they discover might just unravel their carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. Oh my god. It's perfect. Okay, because it's taking a spin on, you know, basic small town romance. But the thing is that they know each other and they hate each other. But it's like for a stupid reason, but also it's valid. And they're both extremely similar in a way um, that they're both perceived by everyone to be very cold, very harsh. And I think it's kind of like what bonds them. And I guess it's kind of relatable because I don't know. I feel like people call me cold. Um which I feel like people listening to this are like, what? What are you talking about? Um, I don't know. I guess I give off that vibe. Who knows? People tell me I'm intim- intimidating. Um, I don't know. I'm literally five feet tall. If you think I'm intimidating, um, check yourself. Okay, check yourself. Um, but anyway, book lovers, it's perfect. It is so perfect. And the funny thing is that it literally makes fun of like small town romance books like the entire time. Um, and the main character, this isn't spoiling anything, but the main character always jokes about, which is like kind of true too, but she jokes about how every single boyfriend she's had has like left her for someone who lives like in a small town for like that perfect small town romance. And she's like, my life is literally a novel. Um, and it's just, it's really funny because the entire time they're just making fun of small town romances and then, oh my God, look what happens, but it's not basic and it's so good. And Miss Emily Henry is a queen and an icon and she hits every single time. But again, if you haven't read Beach Read or People We Meet in Vacation, I suggest reading those as well because they are just so perfect. Um, so perfect. Especially especially people we meet on vacation um that is one of my faves uh i'm not necessarily like talking talking about it in this episode because i feel like i always talk about it and um i guess for y'all that have heard me or listened to my book episodes before you would know about it but speaking of that if you want more book recommendations or more like different types of books, say you're not a big romance gal, um, maybe you want some mystery books, maybe you want some spooky books, um, you could listen to my fall books episode. If you're on YouTube, okay, this is probably the easiest way to find it, but if you go on YouTube, I have a playlist that has all my book episodes in it, so you could listen to that, or I guess you could just scroll through all my episodes until you find it. That kind of seems like a lot of work. Um, but you could do that too. Totally fine. Okay, my next book is kind of a romance, but also not. It feels more just like a normal fiction book, but I wanted to put it in there because it's like not basic. And it's by an author that I feel like there's always a lot of controversy about. Like people either love her or hate her. And that the book is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. And if you've heard about Sally Rooney, you would know um, she doesn't use, like, any punctuation. And her book is like reading paragraphs, okay? There's no quotation marks for dialogue. None. The only, literally the only punctuation is, like, a comma and a period, okay? And that's all you're getting. This is all you're getting from her. Um, and I read Normal People a while back and for me this was like really hard reading normal people like it was really hard for me to get through and it was just like a hard book I thought they also made a show about normal people so if you want to watch that I think it's on Hulu um but I decided to try out another Sally Rooney book because I wanted to see if it would be different I wanted to see how I would like it and I have to say I really liked this one 
And I liked it because um, it's talking about two best friends and it goes through so many different people's perspectives and like different lives and how people live so differently. And it feels more like a commentary about um, friendship and family and just like relationships in general more than it does like about a romantic love story which I thought was really interesting and it also comments on different things like issues in society and it's really cool because um the two best friends in the book they never really see each other in the entire book they see each other in person once but they're constantly emailing each other talking about the most random things and it's so interesting because it really just shows I don't know I just liked it because it was talking about like the power of friendship and it didn't necessarily say that but you could just tell that these two ladies were like such good friends um and it showed you like them fighting them being upset them not understanding them both falling in love how different their lives have been since college and it was just so good it was so good okay Alice, a novelist, meets Felix, who works in a warehouse, and asks him if he'd like to travel to Rome with her. In Dublin, her best friend, Eileen, is getting over a breakup and slips back into flirting with Simon, a man she has known since childhood. Alec, Alice, Felix, Eileen, and Simon are still young, but life is catching up with them. They desire each other, they delude each other, they get together, they break apart, worry about their friendships and the world they live in are they standing in the last lighted room before the darkness bearing witness to something will they find a way to believe in a beautiful world um so if you can tell from the description it is an adult book um so keep that in mind um it really isn't very graphic though i didn't think like it could have been a lot more graphic um so if you are younger, keep that in mind. It is a bit, it is a kind of hard to read just because of the di- the way the dialogue is done. Um, but also at the same time, I feel like her writing is nothing like any other type of writing. Like, it's just so interesting that I feel like you just have to read at least one of her books. And if this doesn't interest you, I also suggest reading Normal People. Um, it is a challenge, okay? I thought it was a hard book. Some of you might be like, Carmen, maybe you're just stupid. And maybe I am, okay? But it's good and it's cute. And I like how she comments on different things in society. And it makes me feel like a smarter person. And also speaking of that, you know how people say, like, the more you read, the faster the faster you read. Wow, you read a lot of books. I bet you read really fast. And the thing is, I read so slow. Like, my Kindle... Um, it shows me how much time the average person takes to read a book. And then it'll show me the time that I take. I take literally twice as long as the average time. But then people are like, Carmen, you read so many books. How do you read so many books? That's because I do nothing else, okay? I can literally sit for like eight hours and just read a book, okay? And people will be like, wow, I can't believe you read a book in a day. And no, that's because I did nothing else but read that book. Like, I read so extremely slowly. And I feel like people think if you read, you read fast. And I don't read fast. I just have, like, a really good, like, attention span, um, at least for books. Sometimes I don't. But then again, I feel like my attention span is getting worse because I watch way too much TikTok. Um, but, oh, well. Okay, so those were all my... um summer books that I had read but I also included on here or I wanted to include in this episode a few books that I'm looking forward to reading this summer books that I haven't read yet uh but are on my TBR and that I've heard really good things about so I just wanted to include that as well um because I don't know I feel like I should give y'all more books and also these next few ones listed are um definitely different from some of the other ones that I have talked about um we have murder mysteries in these a lot of like funny things stuff about um writers I like reading books about writers or like people in the literary world because I don't know I feel like it's interesting and it's kind of fun and that's why I like Emily Henry because she always does that and she's just I don't know her writing is literally perfect 
genuinely obsessed. I, do I have a problem? Maybe. Okay, but my first book that I'm looking forward to reading up next, or at some point over the summer, is The Roughest Draft by Emily Wibberly. And this book is about two co-writers who fell apart, but now they have to come together to finish a book. So, like, they have an issue. I'm pretty sure they were married. Um, Let me read you the description, though, because it sounds really, really good. They were co-writing literary darlings until they hit a plot hole that turned their lives upside down. T. Three years ago, Katrina Freeling and Nathan Von Hussen, Hussen. Again, I'm sorry if I pronounce things wrong, y'all. I'm I struggle. Were the brightest literary stars on the horizon. Their co-written books topping bestseller list. But on the heels of their greatest success, they ended their partnership on bad terms for reasons neither would divulge to the public. They haven't spoken since and never planned to, except. They have one final book due on contract. Facing crossroads in their personal and professional lives, they're forced to reunite. The last thing they ever thought they'd do, again, is hold up in the tiny Florida town where they wrote their previous book, trying to finish a new manuscript quickly and painlessly. Working through the reasons they've hated each other for the past three years isn't easy, especially not while writing a romantic novel. While passion and prose push them closer together in the Florida heat, Katrina and Nathan will learn that relationships, like writing, sometimes take a few rough drafts before they get it right. Oh my god, cute. Aren't you obsessed? Aren't you obsessed? Also, the book cover? Adorable. Adorable. Okay? And it's about co-writers. Okay? Which I think is interesting. Because I don't necessarily know if I've ever read a book by co-writers there is um one book i want to read i think it's called something wilder that's written by co-authors i cannot remember their names um but i think this is interesting because it seems like a cool dynamic but also it kind of reminds me of i guess every summer after in a way too where it's like they stop talking but you don't know why and i'm sure they're gonna like tell you why but not first so we're not going to know why they hate each other, but they hate each other, but I'm sure they're going to be like perfect together. And it just seems like the cutest, most perfect thing. And they're writing in Florida. Okay. Summer vibes on point. I'm so excited. It's going to be so, so freaking good. Okay. This next book, I'm not really sure if this is a uh, romance by that. I mean, I don't think it is at all. And this is called Finley Donovan is Killing It by L. Kazi Mano and um we're getting murder but kind of funny murder so like comedy okay um and this book just seems so freaking funny and just light and just fun and that you can just read it at the book like if you're not looking for a spicy book you don't want an open door romance you just want a fun light book this seems like it would be perfect and I'm so excited to read it Finley Donovan is killing it except She's really not. A stressed out single mom of two and a struggling novelist, Finley's life is in chaos. The new book she promised her literary agent isn't written, her ex-husband fired the nanny without telling her, and this morning she had to send her four-year-old to school with, with hair duct taped to her head after an incident with scissors. When Finley is overheard discussing the plot of her new suspense novel with her agent over lunch, She's mistaken for a contract killer and inadvertently accepts an offer to dispose of a problem husband in order to make ends meet. She soon discovers that crime in real life is a lot more difficult than its fictional counterpart. As she becomes tangled in a real-life murder investigation, fast-paced, deliciously witty, and wholeheartedly authentic in depicting the frustrations and triumphs of motherhood, in all its messiness, hilarity, and heartfelt moments, okay? Like, this is just so funny. How do you accidentally get caught up in a murder? Like, I don't know, but I want to know, you know? So, I just think this sounds perfect. Doesn't it sound perfect? Like, you just want to laugh, but it's, like, about murder, which just makes it kind of funny, like, in a dark, like, sadistical, sadistical way. Um, I don't know. I'm excited, and I want to read it. It's been on my TBR, I think, for, like, only a few weeks. Um... But I haven't gotten to it because a new book 
um in this series that i've been reading came out like the it was like the fourth book it was the king midas retelling one the plated prisoner series i think which why is it called that i don't know um and those books are like deeply cringy yet i keep reading them this is the fourth book in the series and for some reason i'm still going through it and the first two books were literally awful like the entire time she was just being like abused and sexually assaulted and i was like what is going on um but then the third book i will never get over that third book it was magical this fourth one i don't know what's happening it's she the main character is just being really obnoxious and annoying um anyway next book It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Okay, my friends keep telling me I have to read this. And it's been on my TBR for a while, like a hot minute, and I still haven't gotten to it. But this summer, I am going to read it. I am determined. And I think they might be making it into a show or a movie. I can't remember. Um, That might be a different book. I don't know. Piper Bellinger is a fashionable influential influential and her reputation as a wild child means the paparazzi are constantly on her heels when too much champagne and an out-of-control rooftop party lands piper in the slammer her stepfather decides enough is enough so he cuts her off and sends piper and her sister to learn some responsibility running their late father's dive bar in washington Piper hasn't even been in Westport for five minutes when she meets a big bearded sea captain, Brendan, who thinks she won't last a week outside of Beverly Hills. So what if Piper can't do math and the idea of sleeping in a shabby apartment with bunk beds gives her hives? How bad could it be? She's determined to show her stepfather in the hot, grumpy local that she's more than a pretty face, except it's a small town, and everywhere she turns, she bumps into Brendan. The fun-loving socialite and the gruff fisherman are polar opposites, but there's an undeniable attraction simmering between them. Piper doesn't want any distractions, especially feelings for a man who sails off into the sunset for weeks at a time. Yet, as she reconnects with her past and begins to feel at home in Westport, Piper starts to wonder if the cold, glamorous life she knew is what she truly wants. LA is calling her name, but Brendan, in this town full of memories, may have already got her heart. Tessa Bailey is back with Schitt's Creek-inspired rom-com about a Hollywood it girl who is cut off from her wealthy family and exiled to a small Pacific Northwest beach town where she butts head with a surly, sexy local who thinks she doesn't belong. Oh my god. Like I said, small small town romance, okay? But this sounds cute, doesn't it? It sounds cute. Um, really cliche, but I'm- I think I like it. Um, this seems like one of those books- that you can't read after reading a bunch of rom-coms because you're gonna be like this is stupid this has to be like a rom-com that it's like the first one you've read in like weeks so then you're like oh my god it's magical you know that's what i do um because if i read a bunch of rom-coms in a row i start being like literally shut up this would never happen and this is stupid okay but i think this sounds cute and i'm excited for it okay and I can't wait. Okay, my last book that is on my summer TBR that I want to read is called My Va- My Killer Vacation, also by Tessa Bailey. Um, I saw this, it was like recommended to me on Goodreads, and I read the description, and I thought it was so funny. It's like a murder mystery, but also a rom-com. So it's like, I don't know. It just sounds so funny and just so strange. And like the circumstances are so weird that it just makes you laugh. Um, but let me read you the description. It was supposed to be a relaxing vacation in sweet, sunny Cape Cod. Just me and my beloved brother. But discovering a corpse in our rental house really throws a wrench into our tanning schedule. Now a rude, crude, Bounty Hunter has arrived on the back of his motorcycle to catch the killer and refuses to believe that I can be helpful, despite countless hours of true crime podcast listening, not to mention a fulfilling teaching career of wrangling second graders. 
a brash bounty hunter, and an energetic elementary school teacher. The murder sol- solving team no one asked for, but thanks to these pesky attempts on my life, we're stuck together. Come hell or high tide. I'm just here to do a job, not babysit an amateur sleuth. Although, it's becoming less and less of a hardship to have her around. Sure, she's stubborn, distracting, and can't stay out of harm's way. She's also brave and beautiful and reminds me of the home I left behind three years ago. In other words, the painful hunger and protectiveness she is waking up in me is a threat to my peace of mind. Damn. Okay. Before I sink any deeper into this dangerous attraction, I need to solve this murder and get back on the road. But will fate take her from me before I realize the road has been leading to her all along? Wow. Okay. If you think it sounds stupid, I think it does too. But stupid in the best possible way. It's light. It's fun. There's a murder mystery. She's an elementary school teacher. He's a bounty hunter. That doesn't seem like it would go well, but apparently it does. It seems very funny and great, and I'm excited, and I want to read it. Um, a lot of my TBR, I guess you could say, has, like, murder mystery books, but just because I think it's fun to read different types of rom-coms, different types of, like, fun, beachy reads, um, I try to read different types of books, because if I only read rom-coms, I get, like, upset with life and can't do it. That's why I read, like, the Sally Rooney book, that's why right now I'm reading a fantasy book. Like, I like to mix it up, okay? Gotta mix things up to make life better, I guess. But anyway... Those were my perfect summer and beach reads. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you are following me at the Girly Girl Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. Also, leave a rating and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And if you want to get healthy, you want to feel better about life, check out Athletic Greens in the description of this episode. Um, and I hope you all have an amazing week. Happy 4th. Uh, party hard. Uh, live your best life. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.